I don't know if you remember as well, um, there was uh, an issue maybe like a year or two back with Xi Jinping and like hip hop music. Did you hear about that? that I he- did hear about that. Um, and I, I, there were similar statements about from Putin as well. Right. Um, and that there, there is this understanding that Western culture in a lot of ways is, is, is something designed to break apart and cause chaos in developing countries. And in the Western countries, too. I mean, our, our society is crumbling and falling apart. I mean, there's chaos and mass shootings. And, and I mean, the roads aren't being properly paved. I mean, they're unpaving the road. That the West, you know, this radical individualism has gotten so extreme that even the ruling class has no unity among itself. And some of them want to get along with Russia. And some of them want to fight with Russia. Some of them want to get along with China. Some of them want to fight China. And they don't even have any unified vision. It's like chickens running around with their heads cut off. You know, I mean, they, they, they just... Uh, you know, the, the Western societies are basically just pulling apart. There's no central idea any longer. There's no ultimate mission. And, and, and even the Western capitalist order, you know, on some level, you know, a couple generations ago, there was some kind of unifying vision. There isn't anymore, right? I mean, Western, Western society is just kind of coming apart. And that's reflected in our art and in our music and such, is that we're reflecting this, this society that's descending further into chaos and confusion and not knowing what it's about. At this point, what does it mean to be an American or a citizen of the United States? What does it mean at this point? I don't know. I mean, nobody knows. You know, there used to be, you know, 20 years ago, people would have told you, well, there's the idea of America and its freedom and all that. Now, most people know that that's more or less nonsense. You know, you know what I'm saying? And so that there's this there's this whole confusion. What does it mean? What is it all about? That the West is just kind of in decline and that our, our art and our music reflects that. And then, you know, there's a feeling in the developing world and countries that are trying to rise up out of historic poverty and develop and industrialize that that kind of message, that kind of pessimism that's coming out of the West is not helpful. And that, um, that, that they want to want art and music and such that reflects an optimistic message, right? And that that's what I feel is missing because both on the left and on the right in the United States, you get a, a high level of pessimism. And that young people and, and that Peterson, when he's saying clean your room, he's saying, uh, you know, uh, you know, get your life together, go get a job, uh, you know, you know, walk, walk upright, you know, keep your shoulders back. He's yeah, saying yeah. this and that's optimism. Right. It's look ahead to the future. Right. And that people really crave any any optimism right now in this age, because there's so much pessimism and darkness in the world. And that that, uh, you know, that both the left and the right just kind of feed into this. The world is all going to hell. The world is all falling apart. Everything is is coming to an end. And that's not Marxism, right? Marxism is an ideology founded on the concept of historical progress, right? It's the idea that history is marching forward, that human beings with our creativity and our brilliance are always raising the level of productive forces in order to have a more perfect society. And that ultimately we can reach a vision of a society that is so abundant and so comfortable that we don't need a state even, right? That people can take what they need and do what they feel like doing from each according to their own ability, from each according to their need, which is a phrase that Karl Marx used to describe the ultimate goal of communism, something that wouldn't come for like thousands of years. But it's interesting because Marx actually took that phrase from each according to their need from the Bible. I bet you didn't know that from the book of Acts, where the disciples live and, and all is distributed according to their need. So Marx was actually, when he, when he described communism that way, he was using language from the book of Acts from the Christian Bible to try and explain it to people who lived in Germany that was highly Christian. So I think that's particularly interesting. And that, um, yeah, and yeah. That, that, that Marxism is a continuation of a longstanding trend in human history, right? You can go back to Julius Caesar, who fought for the rights of the proletarians in ancient Rome. Uh, you can talk about the Epic of Gilgamesh and how uh, in ancient Mesopotamia, they believed in this, this myth of this, this character called Gilgamesh who was a human being who killed a, a mighty bull, a bull that was huge, but it was because he was a human being, he had possessed intelligence, that he was able to slay this mighty creature, this bull of heaven, and that being that because human beings are, are better than animals. And actually the tradition of bullfighting in, in Latin America and in Spain is actually rooted in the Epic of Gilgamesh, particularly interestingly. And that, that if you look through all human history, there's always been what you could call the city builders. And those who seek to advance human progress build a better life, advance science, advance art, advance creativity, and, and get beyond the hardships and horrors of the world and get to a, a, a more humane society where people are taken care of and where there's a higher level of solidarity among the people. Um, and that Marxism is simply the, the current incarnation of that trend in human history, right? It's people coming out of the French Revolution, 
coming out of the English Revolution and the and really the the German Revolution of 1848, which Marx participated in, seeing that capitalism had not created a, a new order of freedom and justice, that there was still a problem, that 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 all of the uh, the kings and queens and nobles of old Europe had been replaced with the factory owners and the bankers, and that that uh, that 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 human serfdom and slavery had been replaced with wage slavery. And that ultimately the only way this could be re resolved and the only way human progress could continue to advance is if the major centers of economic power, the factories, the banks were under public control and operated rationally so that we as a species could continue marching toward better things and, and ultimately toward the vision of a world that was so comfortable we don't even need a government. That's the vision of Marxism. But unfortunately, when you go to the university and you learn Marxism, you learn something completely different, right? I mean, I, I've had people often, the, the, the great cliche is people say, how do you wear those really nice shoes and be a Marxist, right? <laughs> right? Or, 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 or people say, well, China can't be a socialist country because there's billionaires there. Right. Well, I, the vision of Marxism is that everyone should be able to live the life of a billionaire, right? Mm -hmm. We're all billionaires compared to people who lived 200 years ago, right? You know, the, the idea that, that, that Marxism is about wanting people to have less, wanting people to be poorer, wanting people to be less prosperous. That's, that's, that's a distortion. Marxism is about raising the standard of living, but it points out that the way that those who get wealthy under capitalism get wealthy is largely by making other people poor, right? Mm -hmm. That's how the capitalists acquire their wealth is by keeping people poor, driving countries around the world into poverty, you know, lowering the wages of the working class, you know, hooking people on opioids, locking people in a prison industrial complex, destroying countries with a military industrial complex, that the capitalists their wealth comes from impoverishing others. And we want to create a society where wealth, wealth leads to more other people becoming wealthy, where, you know, as they say, that a, that a rising tide lifts all boats, right? That, that, that socialism is about, you know, just increasing living standards by having rational human reason control the economy, not the anarchy of production or the chaos of the market. And the capitalist only does it if he can make a profit off of it. He doesn't care about the results. And, and as a result, we have a society that's completely crazy and distorted. In times past, people were hungry because there wasn't enough food. Now, under capitalism, people go hungry because there's too much food, right? In times past, people you know, were homeless because there was a shortage of housing. Well, now, under capitalism, people are homeless because there is too much housing. This is an irrational system, and it requires you know, the, the means of production, the centers of economic power to be controlled by society and rationally operated, and a line of march. Uh, that's what Marx talks about, a line of march to be laid out to, to raise living standards and have the economy be planned. Um, and, and China is a success story. China used to be one of the poorest countries in the world. Now it's the second largest economy in the world. Russia, with socialism, became the first country in outer space. You know, Socialism is, is all about taking responsibility and pulling yourself up by your bootstraps, but doing it in a way that doesn't come at the expense of anyone else.